Let us turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And we're going to read a very interesting scripture. In Isaiah 9, verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We know that the child that is born from the book of Matthew chapter 1, that this is referring to Jesus Christ. And his name in the book of Isaiah says that his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. And we have this term called the Everlasting Father. When we see Everlasting Father, we're talking about someone or, or talking about God who existed before time, the Everlasting Father. So the Son is also called the Father. And some people who read this scripture may get confused. How can it be? How can the Son be also called the Father? In John chapter 14, verse 8 to 9, we have a scenario where Philip, Philip was one of the disciples of Jesus, and he has been, uh, you know, he was walking with Jesus for quite a while by now, and he told Jesus and asked him this, gave him this request. Basically, he said this, chapter 14, verse 8 to 9, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it will be enough for us. Jesus answered and said, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Jesus was effectively saying this, why are you asking to see the Father when you have been hanging out with me for so long? Could you not recognize that I am the everlasting Father? Could you not recognize that I am God in flesh? This is a very, very big clue that the Bible tells us of who Jesus is. Jesus is the Father. Then you may tell me, it's impossible for someone to be a father and a son at the same time. Really? Well, let's put it this way. If I'm married and I have a child, I am a father, right? Well, at the same time, my parents are still living. I am also a son. You see, a person can take on two roles at the same time. I can be a father and the son at the same time. Surely, God, who fills all in all, who is the creator of heaven and the earth, and the Bible says that, that He is the living God, a God that, that, that can do all things. He is the rock. He is, he, is, he is the shield. He is the buckler. God has fulfilled so many roles at the same time. He is the shepherd. Surely, God can be both father and and son at the same time. We will explain the concept of the Son of God later on in the Bible study. What does it mean when the Bible says the Son of God? Well, we need to return to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 first, and we need to establish the fact Jesus is the only Saviour. We read in 2 Peter 1, 1, I am writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Saviour. Isaiah 43, 10 to 11, you read it just now, that God of the, the God of the Old Testament said, besides me, there is no Saviour. Now, when you look at all these scriptures, we are faced with an overwhelming sea of evidences with regards to the identity of Jesus Christ. When we search the scriptures, and evaluate them without prejudice. There is no doubt that Jesus is the God of the Old Testament and He is the everlasting Father. Now, let me talk about the Son of God. Why does the Bible say the Son of God? You notice there is no scripture in the Bible that says God's Son, but the Son of God. When we talk about the Son of God, we are talking about the flesh nature of God. The flesh nature of God. You see, Jesus is not just an ordinary man. He was both God and man at the same time. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7 to the 18 tells us, So it is evident that it was essential that He be made like His brethren in every respect, talking about Jesus, to make atonement and appropriation for the people's sin. Verse 18, For because He Himself in His humanity has suffered 
in being tempted, tested and tried, he is able immediately to run to the cry of or to assist, to relieve those who are being tempted and tested and tried. This is from the Amplified Version. God was made flesh, therefore he is both God and man. Key number six, write this down. Jesus is both God and man. In your notes, there is a table that so beautifully describes to us this relationship. For example, the Bible says, Jesus, as a man, he was thirsty. But as God, he provided living waters. The Bible also says that as man, he was hungry. But as God, God doesn't need to hunger. God doesn't even get hungry. Another uh, example would be this. The Bible says that Jesus grew weary. But another, but when Jesus is as God, He gave rest. One more example. As man, Jesus prayed. But as God, Jesus answered prayer. Can you now see the dual nature of Jesus Christ? Sometimes when Jesus does things that seem like He is so human to us, we should not be alarmed but acknowledge that, hey, God in flesh, He is God in flesh. Jesus is human being after all. He feels the same way as you feel. You know what? When you feel temptation, we do not have a God that is, that is ignorant of how we feel. Sometimes we think that, you know, when we, when we mess up and we think that God is going to just use a lightning bolt and just zap us on the spot. No. The fact that God came in flesh is because He wanted to identify Jesus understands. He understands how you feel. He understands that it is not easy to resist temptation. So all you need to do is cry out to Him and say, Jesus, help me. You know how I feel. Jesus can empathize with our pain. He can empathize with our weaknesses. Isn't it awesome? I think we ought to stop rest at this moment and just thank God and maybe if you're going through a tough time right now, I want you to know that Jesus, our God in flesh, understands what you're going through. Let us pray. Father, right now, God, I just want to pray for the student that is watching this video right now. Lord, I, I know, God, that, that every one of us go through temptations. We go through trials in our lives. Sometimes we go through pain, sicknesses. And we think that, 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 that you are a God that is so far off that you do not understand what we are going through. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you made yourself in human flesh, that you can understand all the difficulties that we go through, the fears that we go through, the doubts that we go through. Lord, we thank you, God, that, that you are a God that, that knows our needs and you are able to help us and you know the frailty of, of, of humanity. Father, right now, I pray for that student right now, Jesus, that you will be with them in their difficult situations and God, that you make yourself present and be his help in time of need. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. When we correctly understand that Jesus is fully God and fully man, we can answer a lot of questions about His identity. People read the New Testament. If you just read the New Testament, you may think that there is two people. There is God and there is a Son. But when we read the Old Testament, we have established a fact right at the beginning. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So when we go to the New Testament, we cannot approach the New Testament with the concept of more than one God. And if there's any scripture in the New Testament that gives us an impression that there is more than one God, we have to go back to what we learned in Lesson 1, where two or three scriptures let every word be established. And we can see from the the majority of the scriptures that is found in the Bible, that there is only one God. However, that one God has two natures and that is the only difference between the Father and the Son of God. I can be a father and a son at the same time, but I have one name. God has one name and that name is Jesus Christ. Key number six. Write this down. Jesus is both God and man.